Now, some time ago, I made a video about this on the Creative Sound Blaster or the GFX V2. Was it the new Budget King or was the Asus Xoner AE still better than that one? Well, it came in very close to the first place, but the Asus Xoner AE was still the Budget King of sound cards. But both of those are internal sound cards. So what about external sound cards? Well, I got my hands on this one. It's the Creative Sound Blaster Play! Exclamation mark. Three. So let's find out how good this one is and if it's the new Budget King. Well, hello there and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now today we're going to talk about this one. It's the Creative Sound Blaster Play! Exclamation mark three. Please note the exclamation mark at the end of the word. Something that's maybe something marketing related or that the creative people have because you can also see it in the Sound Blaster X. Please note the X. I really can't understand why that is. Maybe it has to provide some more joy to the play functionality or play name. Really don't know why, but that's all besides the point because we're going to talk about the sound card itself, not its name. The sound card itself is really tiny, and when I say tiny, it's the smallest external sound card, or internal sound card for that matter, that I currently have in my possession. I mean, it's really tiny. But thankfully, according to the people at Creative, this sound card will provide an instant audio upgrade from your motherboard audio. Okay, well, let's see how that turns out. The pricing itself is really nice, it's just 22 euros over here in the Netherlands and I got mine second hand for just 7 euros 50. So if you're planning to buy one, make sure you check out all the second hand ads. Let's head over to the specifications because there are some interesting numbers in here. First up, it's capable of 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. I've seen external sound cards that were larger but can even reach 48 kilohertz. So that's a great start. What else can be found on this tiny and cheap external sound card? Well, it's USB-A. It has a signal to noise ratio of 93 decibels. Now the interesting part is that this sound card also provides support for headphones up to 300 ohms. It's a big claim because again I had external sound cards that claim only to be capable of 150 ohms so i'm really anxious to see how that turns out sadly i just couldn't find any more information on what's inside this little sound card except for breaking the sound card itself and that's something that i'm not going to do my guess is that there's some real tech components in there uh, in the past creative wasn't really happy with real tech but nowadays they seem to embrace real tech as their new supplier of usb uh, audio chips as a, the, well, this one this isn't usb but still it's a real tech chip on there a really good one but still real tech now there is something i want to say about the signal to noise ratio because 93 decibels is a really horrible number it doesn't say a lot I, there's a lot of people in the comments going, well, it doesn't say everything, the signal to noise ratio. No, it's an indication just of how good the sound card is. So let's head over to the driver interface to see what's going on there. And this time it's yet again, the Ye Olden SBX Pro Studio. And this is what the driver interface looks like for the Sound Blaster Play 3. Now it's the same old SBX Pro Studio driver interface that so many of the older sound cards also use. I was a bit sad to see that I didn't use the newer one like they did in the AE series. Now here you can set the SBX Pro Studio for safe surround, crystallizer, bass, smart volume or the dialog plus. Here you can set the speakers, which is now set to the stereo. And there are not a lot of outputs on the sound card or the external sound card. You just have the stereo output or the headphone output. Now, if I select the headphone, headphone output, this is interesting. You can also change the gain for higher impedance headphones. I'll get back to that a bit later on. 
You also have a mixer and a small equalizer. So let's head over to the game. What difference does it make? I'm going to use it in a normal listening session and one with a 250 ohms headphone. Okay, I wasn't expecting a top tier sound card kind of quality. I was expecting that the listening sessions would at least reveal some improvement over onboard sound. And for this solution, I think that a laptop would be the most probable thing that you would use. So a bit better than most onboard solutions. But sadly, it could just couldn't provide any good results. Um, the bass was overwhelming and not in a nice way. The middles were, well, somewhere there, but they couldn't be identified. The trebles were sharp and not pleasant. And the soundstage was so horrible that they just couldn't identify where the instruments were standing on the soundstage. So overall, the listening sessions just, well, they just weren't a pleasant experience. And I just couldn't find anything that was better than your onboard solution. So let's head over to Ride Mark because maybe those results were a bit better and I just had an off day with my ears. And now for the Ride Mark scores. As usual, I did a weighted test because that way the sound card has to work a lot more than doing it with a self test. I did two tests with Ride Mark, one with the normal 32 ohms headphone and one with the 250 ohms. The results from the 32 ohms is very interesting. It gets an average, but that's not what I would give it. The frequency response is horrible. In my opinion, this is more a very poor. There's a difference in the left and the right channel output, meaning that the right channel is louder than the left. And you can see a lot of power in the 60 Hz region, meaning that the bass is very loud. You can see a similar rise at 10 kHz, meaning that the treble is getting too loud again. Something that I noticed during the listening sessions. Overall, this sound card gets an average, with some pours and some average on its scorecard. In my opinion, a pour would be more fitting. The results with the 250 ohms were better and totally unexpected. It's now a bit more acceptable and the results show this by giving the frequency response, the total harmonic distortion and the intermodular distortion goods, but still the results aren't that impressive. The Creative Sound Blaster Play Exclamation Mark 3 is a very tiny little sound card, but it just didn't do anything for me and I doubt it will do anything for anybody else. The results from Ridemark were just not enough. The results from the listening sessions were even more horrible. So I'm struggling to find a market for this little sound card because the onboard solution will probably have the same digital to analog converter as your laptop currently has. So there's absolutely no improvement. The only plus side of things is that I could think of is maybe the software or the driver interface that's included, which is the SBX Pro Studio or Studio Pro. And that's the only plus side, but that just isn't enough to warrant 22 euros for this sound card. Even the seven euros 50 that I paid for it is way too much for this sound card because it just isn't an improvement. And well, you're not doing anything a lot with the driver interface. So there's no point for it. If you want to have an external sound card that, well, is a lot better, you may consider the Sennheiser GSX 300. That sound card is capable of only driving uh, headsets up to uh, 300 ohms, but it also has a microphone in, is designed for gamers. I have it somewhere back here. Where is it? Here. Now, when doing the research for this video, I also found out that the Play exclamation mark 4 is coming along. Now, that one will just set you back 29 euros, 29.99, and it can be bought on the website of Creative. Now, uh, the specs are a lot better. It's 192 kilohertz and has a signal to noise ratio of 110 decibels. So those are our encouraging numbers. Uh, I haven't tested it myself, but when I, when, once I get myself a review sample, you will definitely see it here on my channel. But until now, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video and I'd like to see you in the next one. See you then, bye bye!